My friends, I have an entirely different take on this speech last night. I'm looking at, uh, in fact, I've even got, I don't know how entirely different it is. Now that I think about it, I look at some of the stuff I have in um, in one of my stacks here, uh, various media analyses. I think it's an incorrect thing to look at Obama's speech last night as a foreign policy speech. I think it's a mistake to look at it as a speech on Libya. And the war, or kinetic military activity, didn't say war. I, I think... I think it's um, the only proper way to look at this speech last night was as a campaign speech for 2012. This was a speech designed exclusively for domestic political consumption. This was not a speech about military policy. It was not a speech about foreign policy. It was a speech that Obama waited to give until he had a pretty good idea in his mind of the lay of the land. It was a speech that was given, just like pretty much all of Obama's speeches, a speech in which he's jockeying for position. It's all about making him look good. The key to this speech last night was the President of the United States told a known coward, Muammar Gaddafi, that the world would be better off if he weren't part of it. Now, Obama made a great point about, we're not going to do this militarily. We're not going to send in trouble. We want him gone. And the rest of the world wants him gone. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I knew that I was right when I saw and heard Obama rip into both Bush, 43, and Clinton. When he starts talking about how long it took in Iraq, eight years, which it actually didn't... Uh, this is where he's wrong. Regime change in Iraq took what a couple of days. We got rid of we got rid of Saddam Hussein within two days of moving in there, much faster than Obama has gotten rid of Gaddafi. But Gaddafi, um, uh, well, well, Obama wants to make it look like Gaddafi is going to go. It all hinges on Gaddafi quitting. All of this, this speech last night, totally hinges on Obama Ob on Gaddafi quitting. And folks, if he does. And I hate to be the one to tell you this, but if Gaddafi decides in the next two weeks, month, whatever, to go into exile, you're going to have the biggest victory speech that Washington's ever thrown. And it's all going to be about how great Obama's diplomacy, power of persuasion, how great his words are. Why, all it took was one speech nine days late, but when Obama finally rolled up his sleeves and got involved, Gaddafi finally heard the message and he's gone. It won't matter. Who replaces Gaddafi? It could be the Muslim Brotherhood, could be Osama bin Laden. It won't matter because it's going to take a while. And by the time that happens, it'll all be forgotten. By that time, whoever takes over Libya can be back to being blamed on Bush. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm very serious about it. I got sick to my stomach watching this last night. I got sick to my stomach thinking about this last night. Because I, like you, I got, I, I got caught up and we could, we could analyze it as a as a foreign policy, military, whatever speech, it was a disaster in that regard. It was, an, it was pathetic. It was incompetent. It lacked energy. Obama said a bunch of things that he doesn't believe. I, I almost thought he was about ready to start making a case for American exceptionalism. He said things for the first time last night he doesn't believe. He got really close to articulating the Bush doctrine, which everybody wants to be free, and wherever anybody wants to be free, we're going to go there and make it happen. He doesn't believe that. But when you look at what he knows vis-a-vis -vis 2012, his re-election campaign, where the independents are today, he knows that the vast majority of the American people do believe in American exceptionalism. He knows the vast majority of voters want an exceptional America. So he's um, pliable, very comfortable with making people think that he sees the world and the country the same way. If Gaddafi doesn't leave, two weeks, two months, if Gaddafi doesn't leave, well, no big deal, no real change. Um, Obama can't look any worse than he does. But if Gaddafi decides to scram, and look at this story from the UK Independent, West willing to strike immunity deal with Gaddafi to end conflict. West, that would be us. Britain and other coalition countries would be prepared to allow Gaddafi to escape prosecution, be granted safe haven 
as part of a deal to end the conflict in Libya. Publicly, David Cameron has called for Colonel Gaddafi to face an investigation by the International Criminal Court in The Hague, but privately. Government officials suggest there's growing support for a deal which would allow Gaddafi immunity and the chance to live out his life in another country with some of his wealth. If that happens, folks, I, 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 I want to warn you, you are going to see media orgasms like you haven't seen, not even in Grant Park on election night in 2008. Because you have no idea how desirous the American media is to be able to portray Obama as a kick-butt military leader. You have no desire, or no idea, you can't understand the desire the media has to portray Obama as one of the most powerful and decisive foreign policy presidents in the history of the country. You have no idea. So he makes this speech last night. If, if, if Libya turns out good, meaning if Gaddafi quits, Obama's going to, he'll, he'll, he'll say he won a war, and he'll take credit for it. If it fails, by the, if, if, if Gaddafi does not leave, Obama's still on the good side of everything because he's involved in a humanitarian effort to save countless lives. And it won't matter that Gaddafi retained power um, if, if he stays in power because Obama's still on the side of decency and goodness and uh, humanitarian things. So that's the way to look at this through the prism of the 2012 re-election. Not as a foreign policy speech. Not as a military speech. It's a domestic speech. And he set himself up. I'm even wondering if perhaps, and he's got this incredible ego, one of the things maybe it made him go on that vacation to Rio. He might have thought that simply with the threat that we would go in there, that Gaddafi would quit then. But I am, I'm convinced, you can't talk me out of it, I'm convinced that this whole speech was nothing more than a campaign speech for 2012 to buck up Obama's 2012 foreign policy credentials and to, uh, to set up a, a scenario where if it happens, the word great, unique, special, forceful, whatever, could be applied to Obama. And look at the contrast that would be in, in, um, in practically every program here for the past week. What's the subject been? Incompetence? Disinterest? Um lack of knowledge. I mean, he's been taking hits from everybody. What's the mission? How do we define victory? Why didn't he go to Congress? I mean, Obama's been taking hit after hit after hit from his own side, from the media, from us. And last night he makes it clear, the whole thing here, Gaddafi goes. If Gaddafi goes, oh, what if Gaddafi's forces rout these guys and there's a humanitarian... Well, there is, there is a potential for um, uh, the downside here for, uh, for Obama. If Gaddafi's uh, guys rout the rebels uh, and humanitarian disasters uh, continue to happen, that'll just ratchet up uh, demand for a more uh, strident, forceful uh, military policy. And in, in, in which case, you know, Obama's laid it out. Uh, we're a great country. Uh, we alone protect and stand for freedom. I mean, he's built himself an excuse for ratcheting it up, Mr. Sturdley. He's built himself an excuse for moving in in a more forceful way if he has to. He didn't use the word war. He didn't talk about the rebels. He didn't talk about Congress. He did talk about NATO and the U.N., but he didn't answer a lot of questions that a lot of people were hoping he would answer. He What he did was wait to give this speech nine or ten days to have some sort of lay of the land. Most presidents who have guts and fortitude give this speech on day one, folks, and explain why. And tell the American people the who, what, where, why, what are we doing here, why are we doing it, what's the objective? 
You take the country into war, you tell the people that's what you're doing. We haven't even done that. This is kinetic military action. He waits nine days, I'm convinced, to get the lay of the land. To figure out where he is. To figure out what he can say, what he should say, is going to end up making him look good. It's all about him. And in this case, last night was about the 2012 presidential election. Last night was a domestic campaign speech. We will be back.